Hello YouTube. Today I'd like to show you something that I've had in my collection for a few months now, but only just got to do something useful. This is the Sharp PC5741 from 1990, and it's a laptop that runs DOS. Up top, we've got Sharp PC5700, which is the series of the computer, and on the bottom you'll see the model designation along with other pertinent information. PC5741, 17 volts DC, 2.3 amps at 40 watts. Assembled in the USA. On the side here, you can see that there are some blank areas. So this one says Serial 2 RS-232C, Parallel, Printer Port is here. Then these would be for modem if it was installed, which it wasn't. But I think the previous owner of this computer went for the absolute base model because as we'll see in a minute, it's got the base 386 SX processor with no 387 coprocessor and only two megabytes of RAM. Two megabytes, let that sink in for a second. And it's got a 40 megabyte hard drive. Over here, we've got CRT ports, analog and digital. And of course, an RS-232 serial port. Over here, we've got some dip switches and a switch between LCD and CRT. So LCD would be for the built-in screen and CRT would be for if you plugged in an external display here. Over here we've got brightness and contrast and you can reverse the colors on the LCD. As we'll see it's a black and white LCD so you can have white on black or black and white. And we've got a keyboard port there and a three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. Over here we've got the power switch and AC adapter port. And on the back, there's a spot where you could plug in an external battery pack should you have wanted to. I think the original battery gave something like two hours of battery life. I found very little information about this computer on the internet apart from a couple of PC magazines talking about the computer when it was released. This here is a port for something that I don't know of and up top we've got two screws these of course going to the battery compartment now I've taken out that battery because it's all but dead it's only a 2200 milliamp hour battery just for comparison the cell phone I'm shooting this with has a 3500 milliamp hour battery and is way smaller than this NICAD thing you can tell it's all these C batteries just sealed together and this is the power plug for it All right. Just undo the latches on the side, and here we go. All right, let's power this thing on and see what we get. There it is. And as you can see, 640K man me memory, 1280K extended. Now the CMOS battery inside is a rechargeable battery, and it's all but dead. Turns out that this computer came with a setup disk that I no longer have. So the only way to get to the BIOS is to wait for said battery to die and then it'll show me this prompt at boot. So I'll hit enter to run setup so we can see all the different specs in this computer. All right, so here is the BIOS setup program. So we can see its default date is January 1st, 1989. Main memory, 640K, extended only 1280K. Got no 387 coprocessor. I got one floppy disk drive and one hard drive with a monstrous capacity of 40 megabytes. Let's go to the next field. Okay, so here there's some uh, CRT types and of course your default caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock upon boot. So I will turn that backlight off at five minutes. How about that? Okay, now let's go to the next screen. And now this is for the serial port. So your baud rate, 9600 bits per second. That is the highest data transfer rate through that serial port. So we're in for some real high speed transfer. Okay, so now that we've been through all of this, we can hit escape and 
Save values, exit, and reboot. F4. So here, what we can do is just list all the files in the directory with dir. And I've installed Kermit, which you can use for terminal emulation, file transfer, and a ton of other things that I haven't even scratched the surface on. But the best part is that it's cross-platform. It was developed for MS-DOS, Windows 95, and Linux, which will become important in a minute. I've also put a folder in here, Tools. If we change the directory to that, we'll see I have something called LXPIC, and that is actually a very basic picture viewer. So I'd like to demonstrate a couple of things that you could do with such a computer like this, starting off with LXPIC. Say, for example, you have your digital camera. This here is a Sony Mavica FD7. Alrighty. So I'm just going to take a picture of this computer off screen here. Okay, recording the image to disk. Great, we'll just view the picture real quick. There it is, in all its 640 by 480 glory. Shut that off. I'll eject the disk. There we go. So now, let's take this disk, insert it into the floppy disk drive, like so. Switch our directory to that, and just to make sure. All right, so we've got two pictures, MVC001F and 2F. We just took 2F. So what I can do is copy I'm going to copy it to C Tools. Now we can switch to C. There we go. So I can do LX Pick. And we will load our image off the hard drive. Absolutely tremendous. All right, you may be wondering, that is a little bit anachronistic given that I have a cell phone that I'm recording this whole thing with that could do that in a much more efficient way. That is true. However, say I have something like this. This is a Raspberry Pi in, a, in an aluminum case. All right, so this is a self-contained Linux computer. It's about $35. This is the Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus, and it's got onboard Wi-Fi. Now what if I wanted to view the internet or run things on this computer without having to lug around a keyboard and mouse in a, and screen separately, right? Of course this computer has no mouse, so you wouldn't really be able to do anything like graphics. But if I wanted to run in text mode, say I just wanted to monitor the status of a server, for example, and I happen to have this piece of hardware sitting around, this is still much more convenient than having a separate monitor and keyboard. I have a mission to use that as a dumb terminal to interact with the Raspberry Pi in text mode. So the first step is to realize, oh, this computer has no serial ports on it. Now you can get a converter that will plug directly onto the GPIO pins and then have a USB thing on the other end or a serial port on the other end, but an easier solution would be to use a USB port to serial adapter plus what's called a null modem cable. And a null modem cable basically would hook the transmit line of one computer to the receive line of the other. So here is our USB to serial cable. On one end we've got a USB port and on the other end we've got our standard DB9 serial connector. This particular one is from Ugreen even though it's yellow. Let's connect this piece here to our Raspberry Pi, like so. Alrighty. Now this would need to go into the serial port of this computer, but first we have to transfer, transfer the transmit line to the receive line of this computer so that they're communicating directly with each other. And to do that, we have this. So this is a trip light null modem cable. It's got two female ports on there, one of which would connect directly to this, like so. 
this port will go into our serial port like this. Let's plug in our Raspberry Pi. I have it configured so that the serial port plugged into the USB port naturally will automatically look for something on startup. You have to start up the system CTL service. So let's plug this guy in. Oh, there goes my backlight. Now that we're powered on in the Pi, we can run Kermit. MS-DOS Kermit, 21st May 1995, version Pi. Now we've got our Kermit prompt, and what I can do is set speed to 9600 baud, set port to COM1, and now I can type connect. And as you can see, we have the Raspberry Pi login prompt. So let's log in with the Pi and my password. Here we go. So I have installed a program called Lynx. It is a text mode web browser. So let's run Lynx. Let's go to my blog. So I can hit space to go down and I can read text on the screen. Of course, I can download these images, but I have no way of viewing them in the terminal on that computer. But what we can do is this. So let's choose an image. This article is about a 1996 camera and I have some sample images here that I took with said 1996 digital camera. So they're pretty small files. Alrighty, so here you can see it says image JPEG, download or cancel. I'm going to hit D for download, and I'm going to hit save to disk. Enter a file name. Okay, that's good. Now I have the image on the Raspberry Pi's disk, right? Because I'm just viewing the Raspberry Pi right now. What if I wanted to transfer that image back down to this computer so then I could use LXPIC to view said image? Let's use Kermit's file transfer capability to do just that. So first off, I have to quit out of links. Now let's clear the screen. So now I can run Kermit on the Raspberry Pi. This is C Kermit, and it is written for Linux. So here, what I can do is say, you know, list my directory so I can see what files are there. All right, so the image we want to download is DSC, or sorry, dc0006h.jpg. So let's go ahead and send dc6h.jpg. Now Linux is case sensitive, but DOS is not. So I have to be careful on one side and not careful on the other. Well, I don't have to not be careful, but you get the idea. Okay, so now it's ready to send. Now what I have to do is return control to my local PC by hitting control, right bracket, and then C, and then I can type receive. So now MS-DOS Kermit is receiving that file. Now, it is very, very slow. So you can see here, only three kilobytes. This is kilobytes transferred. All right, so that took just about four minutes to transfer a whole 138 kilobytes. So you can imagine it's not exactly the fastest thing around, but for just viewing text on a terminal screen, it's perfectly fine. All righty, now that we have successfully transferred the file, what we can do is quit out Kermit. And now we're back in local mode. And I'll copy that to C colon backslash tools just to make things easy and open up our image absolutely fantastic impeccable HD quality isn't it so there you have the PC 5741 from sharp released in 1990 I'll link some of the information that I've 
found on the computer, as minimal as it is, in the video description. But if you'd like to see more of how I set this up, or if you like this video and want to see more things like it, I have plenty of retro tech here in the apartment that I can show you guys. So just let me know. But until that time, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Till then.